I'm going to show you how chain attacks work in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Understanding chain attacks is important because successfully executed chain attacks will increase your damage multiplier during the attack as well as the total damage dealt. It's important to do the maximum damage possible during a chain attack. The reason for this is because you can overkill an enemy with a chain attack, which gives you bonus XP. How much bonus experience you get is based on how much damage you did in the chain attack, as well as how much damage you did during the overkill portion of the chain attack. During an overkill sequence, how much XP you get is based on how much damage you do relative to the enemy's max health. For example, if an enemy has a million max HP and you do half a million damage after the overkill starts, you'll get a lot of XP. Alternatively, if the enemy has a million max HP again and you only do a few thousand damage after the overkill starts, you won't add very much to the bonus XP because it's relative to the enemy's maximum HP after you initiate the overkill sequence. The next thing you need to know is that a chain attack ends when 100 TP is not reached in a round. It can also be manually ended. Additionally, a chain attack can end if the chain attack gauge depletes. It depletes by one third for every order by a non-hero character. Using a hero character for an order won't deplete the gauge, which will make it possible to have an extra round. So now you might be wondering, what, what is an order? An order is one of these three cards that it gives you each round, and every time it'll be random. It'll be random which one it gives you, which character it gives you, and also what class this character is based on is going to be their base class. So, for example, Mia is a defensive character. So even though I have her set to an offensive class right now, the card is always going to be defensive. Just like Tyon, he is a healer as his base class, so his card is always going to be a healer. Now. The reason that matters is because which one of these three that you pick is going to determine some things during the actual round, which I'll show you in more detail in just a second. But another thing we need to know about the orders is you'll see that at the bottom it says completion bonus and what it does. So each one of these will do something. What's important to know is that for any of these ones like aggro or reducing enemies defense, something that sounds like it would be permanent or last for a while, the way that those work is that after that guy's attack gets done, gets completed, then that will last the rest of the chain attack. So that's why it's really important your first chain attack, if you can, to pick something like, for example, this one, where it reduces the enemy's physical defense by 35 percentage points during the chain attack. Once this gets completed, then the entire duration of the chain attack afterwards, the enemy will maintain that debuff. So what you do on the first round and second round as far as these completion bonuses matter a lot once you get to the third or final whatever your final round ends up being then it doesn't really matter at all because the attack is over afterwards so let's go ahead and jump into a round i'm gonna pick newbie storm with manana and riku they're the hero that is in my party right now so they're not one of the main characters and their completion bonus is it increases everyone's tp by seven so after this round, all those numbers at the bottom you see above their heads, 30, 25, 25, 35, 15, 15, whatever, they'll all get increased by seven after this round. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Additionally, a hero card like that will not reduce the chain attack gauge on the right. Basically, it gives you a free round, assuming that you can go all the rounds without running out of TP or something like that. So at the bottom left, you'll see all these numbers above everyone's head. This is the base TP on the first round. This is how much TP base they'll give. No matter what, they'll give at least that. So for example, Noah will no matter what give 30. Mia will no matter what give 25. Uh, and this is set no matter what, it's always the same. Tyon is literally always the best for this 35. Noah is always the second best at 30. That's just how it works. No matter what you do, no matter what classes you switch is always going to be like that. Now, once you pick them, they will give bonus TP as well. So they don't actually give that exact number. They always give more than that based on a variety of factors. For example, if they match the card. So for example, Noah is an attacker. At the top right, you'll see the card I picked for Riku and Minana is also an attacker card. So if those two match, it'll give a bonus 10. So knowing that Noah in this situation 
will no matter what give at least 40 TP. But it'll be higher than that because there's a lot of other random factors it's hard to even account for. Like, was the attack blocked or not blocked? Uh, was Noah at full HP? Like, there's a lot of them will be like, it'll add one, it'll add five, it'll add two, it'll add one, whatever. So it's kind of hard to really gauge and calculate that. So you kind of just got to get a feel for roughly how much you'll get and then kind of just try to get the numbers right based off of that. Also, from my experience, it seems like I can manipulate it a little bit, a little bit with the attacks that I pick. So you'll see at the bottom right here for a healer. If I pick the very bottom one, the field says defense up, on average, it seems to give less of those bonus TPs than an actual attack. Doing anything that has a positional thing like a side attack or a front blow or something like that tends to give more TP on average than like a buff attack or something along those lines. Which now is a good time to point out the fact that side attack and front attacks and all these ones that you normally would do to build your special attack or whatever is called your ultimate art. Well, in a chain attack, it'll always count as you're in the position. So you don't have to worry about like right now, Noah is to the side of this enemy. It doesn't matter. He could be behind, he could be in front. It's no matter what gonna proc the side attack effect, regardless of whether or not he's actually on the side. So don't worry about that at all when doing this. And while we're looking down here at these cards, it's important to know the hero card. So later on in the game, you'll start getting heroes. Not very far into the game, but you'll get them if, if you haven't had them already. And each hero has their own specific effect. For example, Manana and Riku, when you pick them, it makes it so the next card gets a bonus 25% TP. So if I were to pick Manana and Riku, and then the next attack, I use Noah. Say somehow Noah hit for 100 damage, just to make the math easy, okay? So no, Noah hit for 100 TP, I mean. Well, because I just went with them, and they give this bonus, then Noah, instead of giving 100 TP, would give 125, because they're make, they make it so the next person gets 125% additional TP if they go after Manana and Riku. Now, there's other heroes with other effects, like yet one of the heroes you get does plus 50 percent tp when using it against a machine and there's other heroes with all sorts of different effects so make sure you know your hero and know what effect it has before you pick it all right so let's dive into this a little bit more now so at the top right we got tactical points at zero percent if it goes above 100 percent then it will trigger that card we picked that order that we picked and then manana and riku will use a special attack that does a ton of damage based on the class and in order to get to 100%, we have to add up all these numbers and try to manipulate this. So when picking these, the first thing we're gonna think about here is that an attacker, if they go first in one of these rounds, they'll get a bonus 25% TP. So it's important to keep that in mind when trying to calculate your TP because your goal is to get close to 100 and then pick someone who hits really hard and have them go in order to try to get to 150 because something special happens when you get to 150. So we're trying to play this game where we either just barely hit 100 or we go hard on it and try to go to 150% or 200% in one go. So some of the easier ways to do that is the healer class. The special thing about the healer class when they attack is the tactical points at the top right, they can't go to 100 if you're attacking with the healer. They will cap at 99 and the card will never activate. So in theory, if you had nothing but healers in your party and all these cards were healers, you wouldn't be able to do a chain attack. That card would be impossible to activate. So we can use that to our advantage. We can try to get the tactical points exactly to 99 using a healer and then it follow up with somebody who has really high TP to try to get 150% when the card activates. Because once you're at 99 and you go over 100, that's your only attack. Once it's over 100, it's going to activate the card no matter what. So you got to try to get in one burst, go from 99 up to 150 or even 200%. So you might be wondering, why do we want to go to 150% tactical points? Why do we want 200% tactical points? Well, the reason for that is because after each round, it will refresh one of these people. So, for example, if I use every single one of these characters at the bottom left in a round somehow, and then the very last one just happens to get me over 100, uh, next round, it will return one to me. I will get one back. And that, and that applies to the matter. So if I have five at the end of a round and I activate the card and I still have five, then the sixth one will come back to me. It just gives one back basically every round. But if you're able to get those tactical points to 150%, then it will give you two of your characters back. 
on the next chain attack round. And if you're able to hit 200% tactical points, it will give you three of your characters back on the following round. So you can do that to make sure you keep enough of your characters available to be able to get through all the chain attack rounds. Because if you run out of characters to pick and you don't get TP to 100, the chain attack ends. So you kind of have to mediate between all these forces to try to get the perfect chain attack going. Before I dive into this in an example, the last thing is these defender characters. You need to know what they do. So we talked about the attacker, we talked about the healer. The defender's a little different. If you finish the round with a defender, then it will 100% chance it will give you your highest TP character back on the next round. So if you get if you hit the 200%, you got three cards back. In this case, I would no matter what get tie on because he's the highest. And then the other two will be random. I'll get back maybe, you know, lands and then Manana and Riku or something. It's just random. But uh, if you end with the defender, whatever card's going to be your absolute highest is no matter what coming back to you. Now I'm going to show you an example from beginning to end. So you'll see this enemy's about to die. It gets really close to death. And then I'm going to activate the chain attack. That's like the ideal scenario. But you'll often find yourself in a boss fight where you just want to do damage and get multiple chain attacks in the fight. If it's a really long fight, you'll just use it as soon as possible and use it multiple times throughout the fight. But if you're trying to get bonus XP, you'll do it right as the enemy's about to die. So now that we're on a fresh one, let's start from the very beginning. So I am going to, because I don't have a defender, I'm going to go ahead and pick an attacker. So I either have Noah or I have Cena. Well, doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to pick Noah in this case because he bypasses defense for his completion bonus. It doesn't matter too much. Completion bonuses are not something to worry about too much, generally. So now, because I picked an attacker card at the top right, that's gonna pair with an attacker. So Noah will do 40, Mia will do 35, base. So now, because I can't use defender, because defenders are also kind of a good way to end a round, I, I can't really end with a round, end the round with a defender, because I'm gonna try to get 150% tactical points on this round. So in order to do that, I'm going to see if I can get lucky by using Mia and then Manana and Riku. And Manana and Riku, after I use them, the next character is going to get 125% additional TP. And so I'm going to try to pair that with Noah. When, so then he's going to be paired with this card. He'll get 40 plus 25 and all that. But the catch is I might go over 100 when using this card and then it'll end the round, which would be unfortunate, but we'll give it a shot. Now, for Mia's attacks, I'm going to use Hidden Thorn, the bleed, hoping that it won't do a crazy amount of TP. And you'll see we started the overkill. So now we are into the XP bonus part of this minigame, so to speak. You can see on the right, XP bonus 205. Uh, now, also, we're going to see how much additional damage we're doing with every attack. So uh, now that I did that, I got 53, so that's good. Now we're going to use Manana and Riku to try to get close to 100 and not go over 100. Now, it, I have no way to predict how much it's actually gonna give me here. Hopefully they'll give a lot, but not too much. It says 15, but for some reason these ones always give a ton. And they pair with the attacker, so it's 25 base. So I'm gonna pick walk a block on the bottom right, the sided break attack, and hope that it hits for a lot. All right, so we got 38, we got 40. So that's decent, that gets me to 93. Hopefully now this will be enough. It should be enough, we'll see. So now, because it's an attacker card, paired with an attacker, it'll do 40 base, plus all the random stuff that's hard to predict. And because I just went with Riku and Manana, I will get a bonus 25%. So hopefully all of that will add up to more than 57% tact or 57 tactical points and take me over 150. So we're at 93 now. I'm gonna use Hammerhead Myopic Screen Fusion Attack for side attack and daze at the bottom right. And hopefully we'll hit enough to get to 150%. So we use all that. We hit 51, 53 TP. We get the 25% bonus, and that takes us up to 159. So it gave us, I don't even know, like 70 or 68 or whatever it was. So because we went over 150, we'll get two cards back. But also, we the cards are going to be totally random. So we got really unlucky. We got Mio, and we got Riku and Manana back. I was hoping to get Noah back because he was going to have more TP, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. So... Now for this next one, I'm gonna pick Manana and Riku. I'm gonna pick their order. Now the reason I'm doing this, I'm doing this for a few reasons. One is because they pair the attacker with an attacker. I get a big bonus when I use Mia to finish around. But also, at the bottom right, you'll see that little circular wheel. That's our chain attack meter. And we used up one third of it by doing an order. Well now we're gonna pick Manana and Riku. That's the hero 
in our party. And if you pick the hero in your party during this, then that won't use up one of your chain attack rounds, which will let you get an additional chain attack. So we're going to pick them now. And that won't use up that chain attack gauge. So now we get an additional round. And we're going to try to keep building up Mio. So now we need to talk for a second about why Mio has 53 TP now. She had 25 before, so what happened there? Well, the way that that works is when one of these characters attacks in one of these sequences like this, you'll see, you know, they gave however much TP. In that last round, Mia gave us 53 tactical points. And so because she gave us 53, on the next round, if she gets reactivated, her new base TP is how much, how much TP she gave us last round. So because she did 53 tactical points and she got reactivated, now 53 is her base. So we can use that to our advantage in order to try to boost her again and build her up and make it so it's really easy to get a ton of tactical points in each round. So what we're going to do here to try to maximize the tactical points is we're going to use Riku and Manana. And we're going to try to get the gauge as high as possible here, but I'm not gonna worry too much about getting close to 100 with them because I can't predict what they're gonna do. Sometimes I'll use them here and instead of 40, they'll do like 90 or 110. It's crazy because I'm pairing an attacker card with an attacker, plus heroes just, I don't know what it is, one of those bonuses or something. They just seem to give more on average. So there's just a lot of variables. So even though this is 40, because it's paired with an attacker and it's the first attack and all this, it's probably going to do a lot. Hopefully not 100. I really hope this does not do 100. I want this to do like 80 or 90. So I'm going to pick the walk block against side break attack. And we'll see what we end up with. So we got 61. And that was all, unfortunately. So something else to think about, which kind of slipped my mind there, was heroes apparently do not pair with the card. So even though that was an attacker with an attacker card, it did not give... Or even though that was an attacker in general... That did not give the 25% bonus for starting with an attacker. Because if you start with an attacker, you get 25% bonus to everything. But it's fine because I'm just trying to build up Mia and hopefully do 150%, get both of these cards back. So I just used Riku and Minata. That's going to make Mia get 25% additional TP. So hopefully that plus the car combo with the cards and everything, maybe she'll get a bunch, maybe not. We'll see what happens here. We'll either get lucky or we don't. So I'm going to use Null Slash Wide Slash. She's going to hit for 76 plus the 25%. That takes us to 156. Thankfully, that was enough. And also, because we got over 150, that'll bring back two cards. But we're missing three, so let's hope we get lucky. Okay, we got Mia back again, which is what we wanted. Cause So now Mia is a 95 card because on top of that 25% bonus, her total TP that she gave us there was 95. So now she's like a super card at this point. So now what we want to do is talk about something else that we hadn't talked about yet in these chain attack sequences, which is Ouroboros. Once you progress further through the game, you'll unlock the ability to use Ouroboros, and then you'll unlock the ability to use Ouroboros attacks in your chain attacks. So the way that that works, if you've unlocked that in the story, is when you pick these cards, if you pick whichever character, if you pick their opposite complementary character during one of these orders as well, you'll be able to do an Ouroboros. It'll actually force it on you, basically. So, for example, Tyon pairs with Uni, and uh, Cena pairs with Lance, and all of that. So if I, for example, pick Cena here, and then on the next round, one of these card options is Lance, and I pick him, and we do a whole order with him, then the next round will be an Ouroboros. Now, if you complete that when you're out of chain attacks, it will force the Ouroboros round, which will let you get another chain attack round. So if you combo that with a hero card and the Ouroboros thing, you can actually get five rounds of chain attacks instead of three. And that's why you want to manage this just right. So to check who you've used already, you can see the top right, I got a Bravo with Noah, a Bravo with Riku and Manana. It's actually impossible for me to pair here because none of these pair with Noah. So I'm going to pick Cena and hope well not hope there's actually no way for me not to get it on the next round I'll be able to get someone who pairs and then we get an Ouroboros so we have two chain attacks left before we're out so everything should be good at this point we're set up just right I'm gonna go ahead and pick Cena she's an attacker 
That will combo with Mia, who does 95 TP base at this point. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just try to build up TP to 100, and then I'll have her go, and she should carry us up to 200 tactical points. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not going to pick Noah because he's an attacker on first round, and he has 73. He's just going to go over 100 TP no matter what at this point. So we don't want to do him. I'm just going to go ahead and pick Tyon, and he shouldn't go too high. He will shoot at like 50-something. So yeah, 53 TP. Then I'm just gonna start using the healers until we are at 99 cap. Remember, healers can't go over 100. They can't hit 100. So we're 84. We can just follow up with another healer and it can't go to 100 if you use a healer. Well, that's the heal healer's special ability in these chain attacks. So now we're at 99. All right, so now we wanna follow up with Mia. And you remember that Mia is an attacker and the card we picked was Senna, who as a base is an attacker and you can see the icon on her card. So that'll give us a base bonus of 10. So no matter what here, Mia will hit for 105, guaranteed, which will take us very high on the tactical points. So we don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna use an all slash wide slash, hit for 113, 118, 121. All right, that took us to 220, amazing. All right, so because of that, we'll get three cards back on this next round. Now, we can't control what we get because we finished with an attacker. It'll be totally random, but we got lucky and we got Mia back. It wasn't guaranteed we got Mia back, but we got her back. All right, so now we're in a really interesting spot. So now you'll see the bottom right, the chain attack gauge. So we only have one chain attack gauge or chain attack left. You see it has a third left on the gauge. So this is going to be our last round, no matter what, sort of. So what we want to do now is we want to look at the top right. We used Noah, we used Senna. So we need to use one of their counterparts here. And if we can finish this attack, even though our chain attack gauge is gone, it will let us do another one to do an Ouroboros round. So Noah and Senna. So I could use Mia, and I would combo with Noah, or Senna would combo with Lance, but we don't have Lance here. But we do have Mia. So Mia combines with Noah to do an Ouroboros, so we're going to have to pick her here so we can do an Ouroboros round. So she's a defender that's not going to pair with... Mia here, she's been pairing with herself ironically, because I the class I have Mia set to is an attacker class, but her base is a defense. So again, just to remind you, what class is on their card up there is based on their base class, not what you've switched them to. So if you switch someone to a healer, they weren't originally a healer, their card will be a, a healer, but their actual thing down here at the bottom left will be whatever their active class is right now. That's why she does not match with herself, which in case you were wondering. Okay, so we, we want to finish with Mio, and we don't want to overkill with anyone else. So again, we can't use Noah. He'll hit for over 100 on a first round. Uh, we can open up with Tyon, and hopefully he won't hit 100. I doubt he will, but we'll see. Okay, he hit 74. That's perfect. Now we're going to use a healer. Lance, I have Lance set as a healer right now, so we're going to use him. He won't take us over 100. Healers cannot go over 100. So that brings us up to 99. And then again, we're going to finish with Mio, and she'll take us over 200 so we can get cards back, which doesn't really matter on this round. At this point, you're just trying to get max tactic points because it, it, it like the Ouroboros will give you all your cards back. So it doesn't really matter on this round, but you do it anyway because the higher that TP goes, the more bonus XP you get, the more bonus damage you do and all that. Like you see at the bottom right, my damage is now at 1,057 times damage. For any of the attacks that happen during this chain attack right now, we're going to do a thousand or ten times additional damage already. So that's why you always want to go really high on that, even if it doesn't accomplish anything. Okay. So now, because that unlocked an Ouroboros attack, it'll give us an additional round where we get to pick this Ouroboros. Now, the way Ouroboros chain attacks work, in this situation at least, is that there'll be any of the classes, any of this, so you'll see it's a defender, attacker, and a healer. So it'll give a bonus to any of those. If I pick a defender, they'll get plus 10 TP. Attacker, plus 10. Healer, plus 10. It's gonna apply to any card. It's like a super card, basically. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that. It's time for the Ouroboros round. So all we need to do now is complete this round. Uh, just at all. Complete this round, and it'll do an Ouroboros attack, and that's gonna be the end of the chain of attack. So, again, we're going to try to not go over 100, and then we're going to use Mio again. Now, I would love to use Riku and Manana, and then use Mio because they give that bonus 25% to the next character. 
but it is way too risky. There's a decent chance they'll just hit over 100, and I don't feel like taking that risk. So instead, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to attack with um, Uni and just hit whatever. Hit 54 in this case. And then attack with one of the healers and get us up to hopefully 99. All right, healers can't go over 100, so now we're at 99. And then I'm going to again finish with Mio to try to get as high of tactical points as possible to boost that bonus damage for this final Ouroboros attack. So let's see how high we go on this. 158, 161, that'll take us to 260. And now our bonus damage is 1,407%. So we're hitting 14 times harder than our base damage. It's going to do this Ouroboros attack that's going to hit for obscene amounts of damage for the level that I'm at. And that is your ideal chain attack. So walking you through that, hopefully that makes the chain attack make sense. Just one thing to explain, it's nothing to show you it. So hopefully now you get an idea of what you're aiming for. So 350k damage at level 30 is pretty insanely good. That's like about as good as you can possibly get. I got 600 XP where this thing at this level would only give like 100 or something base. I don't know. It doesn't give much. So that is your ideal chain attack. So there's one more type of chain attack, which in order to do it, you'll have to get an inner link level three with your Ouroboros, which is something you'll lock, unlock later on, which I'm struggling to do here against such a weak enemy. So I'm gonna try swapping to this now, and then hopefully we'll do it. So in order to charge your interlink level, you'll need to use fusion attacks. And fusion attacks will bring up to level three. If you can get it to level three and have a fusion attack ready, or have a chain attack ready, I mean, then you'll be able to do a special type of chain attack. So right here, if I can get interlink level 3 before this thing doesn't AoE and kills everyone, I'll be able to show you what I mean. Okay, we got interlink level 3. I'm going to use it before this thing kills everyone. Just in time, he did an AoE. And now I'm going to use a chain attack while an Ouroboros interlink level 3. And this will start the attack with an Ouroboros card. And what happens when you do this is... You only get basically one round, so let's go through it. Let's use, uh, I don't know, we'll start with Noah. Now give us a bunch, and then we'll use Lands, and that will give us up close to 100, or actually give us 99. Okay, that worked, perfect. And then we'll use Tyon, and go ahead and get our 150, why not? And then it will just do an Ouroboros attack immediately. And then afterwards, you will get another Ouroboros attack. That's going to be the other character from the two combo you picked. So it was Mia and Noah, for example, on the one I just picked. So uh, I get to use... So first it was Mio, and now it's Noah. So now we can do Noah's Ouroboros attack on this thing. So uh, again, we're going to start off with... You know, this thing with Mio. And then we're going to go to Lands. And that'll get us up to 99. And then we'll follow up with, I guess, we'll just follow up with uh, Tyon. Why not? It doesn't really matter. Get up to 150. Just get as many tactical points as possible, whatever. And then it will do the Ouroboros attack from Noah's Ouroboros form. And then it'll just end after that. So there's upside and downside to doing that, obviously. So the upside is you get to do immediate or or so whatever. But really, as far as I can tell, it's just better to do a normal chain attack. Like, th there's no reason to do the Ouroboros one. Maybe there's a reason that I'm not seeing, but it doesn't really matter. Just normal chain attacks are... If you know what you're doing in a normal chain attack, they have a lot more potential, it seems. Again, unless I'm missing some game mechanic that I'm not aware of yet. Maybe unlocks at the very end of the game or something. I don't know. So yeah, that is chain attacks. That's everything I can tell you about chain attacks. Hopefully now you'll know what you need to know about chain attacks. I did my best to explain this as slowly and steadily as I could in a way that you can actually keep up with because there's so many moving parts in a chain attack, in this chain attack system, that I did my best to try to explain this in a way where you could for sure understand. So hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully now you know how chain attacks work in Xenoblade Chronicles 3.